Hey crew, what's new? Today we're building out this layout um, in Bubble's new uh, responsive engine, usually used for sites with quite a bit of navigation options, dashboards, uh, complex apps, that kind of thing. Um, and we're going to be building out layout today together. Um, before, uh, the nice thing I think that I realized is that um, even if you have these items laid out, uh, what you can do is reuse the very same ones for uh, your mobile navigation as well as uh, your desktop navigation without having to build out two of these uh, sidebars here. So we're going to be doing that today from a brand new page here. Uh, and while it's creating, um, just to let you know, this channel will never be monetized, I believe in uh, freedom of information and uh, go ahead and upgrade it to responsive beta. If you want to support my efforts, there's a link to tip in the description. Let's begin. We have our page. We're going to give it a background color uh, just so we can see sort of what's going on. We're going to go to layout and we're going to change this from fix to uh, whatever it is you'll need, either row or column, depending on your layout, your underlying layout. I'm not discussing that today because today we're just doing the menus. So here's our first floating group. As you know, the floating group uh, basically remains anchored to your viewport uh, as you scroll through the page. And we're going to make this a, a row element, meaning that all of the items inside will align horizontally beside each other. We're going to uncheck fixed width. We're going to give it a minimum width of zero. Uh, sorry, of 100, and instead of pixels, we're going to select percent. This way, this floating group will always take up all of uh, the room required, and then we're going to go ahead and add a group, which will be our logo slash button, and this one we can leave uh, actually fixed um, because we want it to always remain 60 and 60, and if we want to change that, we're going to uh, change it manually or in the conditionals for other layouts. Um, so this button is going to be our menu button, uh, menu toggle, and as well our logo, sort of like you see here on top. And then when uh, we go down to mobile, it'll look like this. Uh, still some styling issues, but anyways. Next, we're going to have our title, which we can use a similar layout. We're just going to center it and we're going to pick something that makes a little bit more sense in terms of uh, size. And we're gonna just leave a placeholder for a title right now, okay? The layout, again, we're gonna uncheck the fixed width. Now it's taking up all of the room available. We're gonna pick a minimum width that makes sense for our layout, maybe 200 to start. And then what we can do is add our uh, reusable element, which is nav H. I'm going to teach you how to do that uh, in the next videos. Uh, but for now, what you could do instead of using uh, this, you can use just a group and uh, style it the same way. We do want it to have a minimum width. Uh, that's basically its full size. We want it to give uh, a right margin uh, that makes sense. So we're going to use 16. I'm doing uh, factors of 8 today. And our vertical alignment will be centered. We do want it to be a fixed height because we don't want it popping down at all. And there you go, we built up basically the first piece uh, on top for um, <clears throat> the desktop portion anyways. So that's what it looks like. Sorry, that's actually what it looks like uh, here. And if we had given it a color, you'd notice there's a 60 by 60 uh, thing here, and then the title starts. And then you have at the other side your uh, navigation elements. Okay, so one thing that doesn't look quite right is we need to add some uh, padding here or a margin here uh, to make sure that the title doesn't stick to our actual button. So we're going to give this one also a, um, a little bit of color. Uh, it's too close. We're going to leave it pink. Okay. So this is where you're going to put your logo in an image uh, element and so on. Play around with it until you're comfortable. The next piece of layout we want to build is the left side. And if we're having 60 uh, top to bottom, we have to maintain that by having 60 um, left to right. So let's make this one a column. It doesn't really matter as long as it's not fixed. It's not going to be fixed width, but it's going to have a minimum width of 60. And then we're going to say fit width to content, meaning when 
uh, the elements are here, you could just see the picture. And then when uh, it's hovered, then the content will expand and the floating group will be able to fit to that content. Okay, so let's do that. And let's go appearance, background color, flat color, white. And now you'll notice that this group uh, actually overlaps with the button. And this is one of the current limitations that I've found. Uh, we can make it align to top um, and we can put a 60 pixel, uh, you know, element here. And then basically this will uh, travel all the way down the screen if we say, make the element height 100%. And the reason it's gonna cover the entire width of the screen and actually go 60 pixels uh, lower, as you can see here, um, is because of this padding. It doesn't take it into account. So what we'd actually have to do is calculate the 100% minus the 60 pixels. And that's something that Bubble doesn't allow yet. But um, for now, we're able to reveal this and click through on our actual page. We'll be able to click through to the pink uh, if we put that margin on, even if this uh, actual floating group is further forward or the Z index is higher. Uh, so let's say bring to front uh, is actually over this, we can still click through the margins. Okay, so that's important to know. Next, we're gonna put in a group. This one here will sit at the top. We do want like a little bit of the margin here. We could pick uh, 32 or you know something something cool. And the container layout is going to be a row uh, as well, or a column. Um, it is going to be a minimum width of 60. We never want it smaller than that. And we do want it a minimum height of 60 as well. Um, but we don't want a max height, and we do want it to be able to expand if the content is wider as well. Okay? So far, so good. The alignment to the left is fine. The container alignment is fine. And we're going to go ahead and stick our navigation uh, reusable in there and it should work out of the box. I hope so. I really hope so. Because in the navigation element itself, it's, is it not here? Ah, yes, it just took a while to load. And there you go. So something is happening here and the actual floating group itself isn't fitting, but we're able to see these uh, items pop out. Actually, this gives me an idea for another design uh, feature could be that each of these would just pop out as their own little button. That might be cute. I might try that. Um, now you'll see that as it's expanding, this little bar shows up. You can fix that with uh, some simple CSS uh, styling on this element itself. But what we forgot to do, uh, why is it not fitting to content? Because the actual navigation element uh, is going to be 60 all the time. Uh, the navi, that's the reusable element. You'll just have a group for now until I teach you how to build out these navigation items in the next video. So, so far, so good. Now the next thing we want to do is toggle, basically, if this floating group is showing at a certain breakpoint. What I mean by that is we're going to be looking at it mostly at 1200 pixels for desktop and so on, but as it becomes smaller, you got your Kindle Fire here at around 1,000 and um, <clears throat> your iPad Pro at 768. Sorry, iPad, uh, your regular iPad's not the Pro at 768. So around this size, I think it's important to start uh, maximizing the screen real estate that we have by basically putting all of these things into uh, their own menu that you can toggle um, if you're using a device like a phone or like a tablet. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. And the first thing we want to do is just, whoops, that's the wrong page, UI Builder, grab this title, and we're going to say layout, uh, conditional, sorry, we're going to say when page width is less than 768, which is a good break point to use, we can just hide the element, okay? And um, so that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is saying if it's larger than 768 or equal to, then show it and remove it on page load. And the reason you wanna do that is because Bubble will never actually fetch the render on this element if it's not visible on page load. It'll run the conditional first. The other way around, it'll actually load it onto the page and then hide it, which is slightly more performance intensive, okay? We're gonna copy that, we're gonna paste it on uh, this uh, navigation element. And we're gonna need, obviously, uh, 
to remove the visibility on page load. Now, the next thing we want to do is collapse these uh, to make sure that they don't actually appear and that this floating group um, doesn't take up the room that they will basically take up if they were visible. Okay, so now we're all set. Basically, when we close the responsive, we should only have, there you go, this guy right here. Now, the next thing we want to do as a conditional is to fit. Ah, uh, yeah, we can't do that. Whoops. Okay, the next thing we want to do is actually hide this one as well in a very similar fashion. If it's bigger than 768, then we're going to show it. It's not visible on page load. And whoops, it has to be a row to collapse. Is that right? No. Ah, it doesn't matter if it collapses or not because it's a floating group. Right. So this is a row. It's aligned left. Uh, it could be a column. It doesn't matter. No, it has to be a row, and this is why. Conditional. Now we're going to get into the juicy stuff. Um, when it's over 768, it's going to be visible, but we need conditions for when it's smaller than 768, i.e. Um, <clears throat> sorry. I.e. when it's smaller than 768, and we've activated the menu. So how do we activate a menu? We're going to go into floating group A. We're going to click here and add a custom state. Uh, menu is showing and this is going to be a boolean and the boolean is going to select whether or not we turn uh, the menu on when we click on it and whoops I didn't mean to select list default value is no and if it's not showing and we click on here we actually want it to show right so let's start edit the workflow and let's go element actions set state of floating group A's menu is showing to be floating group A's menu is showing is no, and then we'll be able to toggle that uh, on and off, right? Now, if you uh, look at the conditional here and it's smaller than 768, uh, it'll be visible. We want end uh, floating group A's menu is showing is yes, and then it will appear. So let's start by testing that uh, on a screen that's slightly smaller than 768. And as we can see, we'll be showing it or hiding it depending on whether or not the user actually clicks on this button here. Okay, so far, I think so good. Um, yeah, I made a mistake on the top there. Okay, we'll, we'll figure that out after. Right now, this will always show. And when you click on it, this guy comes in. Now, what's kind of ugly about this is you can leave this actually, it's kind of nice on um, tablet, but on phone, um, it's going to be, let's say an iPhone 11 Pro. It's a little bit ugly because you're gonna see half the content here. So what we wanna start doing now is just center the entire thing across the screen. Um, so the other uh, things we can adjust here are the minimum width, if it's less than 768 and it's showing, so essentially a small, uh, smaller device, we're going to go 100% on the min width, okay? And the next thing we do is grab the parent of the, like this, um, this group, and we're going to add that same condition. If it's smaller than 768, then we want the container alignment to be center, okay? And we're going to go ahead and try that and see if it works. I hope it works. I started playing around with this really not too long ago, to be honest with you. Okay, it did not work. Why? Layout, this one is aligned. Okay, and this one is a row, align middle, conditional alignment, container alignment. That's right. We have to put it on the floating group itself, I believe. Let's try again. Boom. These pictures will load in. There you go. Now it's re reasonably centered. I mean, when I designed it, I went a little bit further to the right, so it's not exactly centered. But now you have a uh, essentially a menu that you can use on both um, mobile and on desktop. And as simple as that. So have fun with the layout. Any questions you have, let me know. And we're going to be doing a little bit more work uh, for, the, for the navigation elements themselves in the next video in this series. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it was useful.